Hi, folks. Hope you're having a really good week. We are on uh, Tuesday now, which is really, really awesome, and I am recording for Wednesday. Hope you're having a good one. If you like what I do, please head on over to Composite Games and keep supporting them. You get an extra 5% off checkout if you use the promo code Northern Exile down below. So, as a little bit extra money off of your next hobby purchase. Not only do you save them, or help them, but you also save and help the channel moving forwards. Thank you very much for doing so. And if you really like what I do, the Patreon is down below, as well as the subscribe buttons. You know what to do, if, if, if you're so inclined. If not, no problem. And please, just enjoy the video. Let's head on in on it, shall we? So. Hobby Nightmares. What a day we shall have. Let me just have a little cough here, because every single time I go out, at any point, I get ill. That's what happens. So there we go. Uh, Blackstone Chaplin says... Hey, Northern Exile. First and foremost, I have dyslexia. No problem, man. But I'll try my best to edit it. Anyway, this is uh, this will be short but sweet story about my girlfriend's birthday. About, sorry, about my friend's birthday and what I got for him. We will call my friend Dave. Yeah, it's a running thing on the channel. It's Dave or Mike. Those, those are the names that are always used. I can only apologise to Dave's or Mike's of the world for his ruining your time in the hobby. Anyway... So this was back in 2019, the good old days, when I got my first job the year prior, so I had plenty of money to go around. One day, Dave invited me to his birthday party at the largest hobby store in our city to play board games and card games, to which I accepted, of course, then on the day of the, uh, uh, then on the, day of the party. What? Okay. Um, yeah, dys dyslexic, so we'll, we'll, we'll give you a pass, um, but like, yeah, um, Four stops in the middle of sentences really throw me. So apologies if you re if you're listening to this, but uh, yeah, when I see a full stop, I stop. <laughs> so okay, to which I accepted, of course. I was going to buy a demon prince for his Warhammer Chaos army. A family member drove me to a smaller hobby shop and stayed outside as I walked in. Looking around the Warhammer section, they did not have the demon prince that I was looking for, except for one. The store had Magnus the Red, and was even running uh, was running out of those, and I was running out of time. So, I grabbed it and rushed to the cash register. The man behind the register looked hard at it and asked me, Are you sure you want to buy this for your friend? He is pretty overpowered right now. I vaguely remember responding along the lines of, Yeah, I know, but it's his birthday today. To which I then paid for it. I got back to the car, and my family member asked me, Is that what you wanted to get him? To which I responded with, uh, no, they didn't have the one I was looking for originally. However, I think this must, might, he might like this one better anyway. We then drove to the other hobby, hobby store where the party was, which was ironically my old place of work. Upon arriving, I said goodbye and went inside. And I then texted Dave saying I was there. As I waited for him to show himself, I tried to hide a large box in my coat to surprise him. Though in retrospect, I may have looked like I was a thief or some kind of weirdo. After a wait of a few minutes, Dave appeared before me when I showed him the gift I had for him. His face was priceless. Okay, I'm going to, like, stop here and just uh, say another another thing that I, I, I got sent the other week, which I haven't read yet, but I should do. Um, essentially, it is a story very, very similar to this, where somebody gets a, a, a I think it's a Scar brand or something, something with a large box. I'm going to have to reread it. But he goes into the store, he puts it under his shirt to hide it from, from his friend who's coming in. And the store immediately try and kick him out for stealing Scarbrand. It's just hilarious. I'm going to have to read that next time. Uh, <laughs> the fact that he had to, like, get his receipt out for the other store. Like, no, I bought here, look. Uh, anyway. I won't lie. I was a little bit confused at first at his explosive reaction to, of joy. However, I quickly realised it was because I forgot his favourite Primarch was Magnus. And he was missing this part of his army. To put it in D&D terms, I hit a natural 20 by pure luck. I did feel bad, though, since I outshined his boyfriend and he had gotten his game cards for the day. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's hilarious. So like, you come in there with Magnus the Red, just like plunk him down and his boyfriend's like, oh, I'm going to got you some cards. So, yeah, well, you know. Get good. I profusely apologised to his boyfriend for this. But they were all good with it. After which, we then spent hours playing card games and board games. I do remember one of the card games we played a lot that day was Explosive Cats. 
This was my hobby story, and hopefully the first of many. I am, a, I am an aspiring writer, so criticism is welcome, as I want to try and get better. Well, do you know what? Like, hobby Nightmares, man, is not the, not the place for your criticism to, to, be, to be given to you. Hobby Nightmares is, is just to mess around for us to talk about different parts of the hobby, right? So, a lovely little heart warmer there. Thank you very much for, for getting your friend the right thing and not actually, you know, uh, embarrassing his boyfriend too much. If I was his boyfriend, though, I'd be like, who is this guy? And why is he buying my boyfriend, like, Magnus the Red? Uh, anyway. Uh, Raven Blood says... Okay. My story today happened when I was 25. And is about a guy we will call Tim. This was the first and last time I've ever seen Tim. But apparently, he was a regular at my local games workshop. Must have just been in on different gate uh, on different days. Sorry, yeah, I've just read that last story, so it's still in my brain. Must have just read. Must have just been in on different days, I guess. He must have been about my age at the time, maybe a little younger. He had a bit of a scruffy stubble and was wearing a denim jacket with Pokemon patches on it. Not gonna lie, the jacket was pretty cool. No, it wasn't, mate. No, it wasn't. He was wearing a denim jacket with Pokemon stickers on it. It it wasn't cool. Okay, I, I, no. Uh, anyway, I was taking part in a store tournament, and so was Tim. Tim was very, shall we say, different. I think he must have had some, some kind of mental condition, because he kept sharing very private information with everybody at the table. The kind that no normal person shares, because it's either embarrassing, or it's indecent, and would make people uncomfortable. I think he must have thought he was just making small talk, but it's definitely not the way to do it. On one occasion during the tournament, he turned on the player standing next to him, I was on the opposite side, and said, Ah man, I, this morning I woke up and there was shit all over my sheets. Hopefully this will cheer me up. Uh, dude, why did you just tell us this? <laughs> um, normally I would call BS on someone just coming out and saying this kind of stuff, right? But I've seen this happen before. <clears throat> uh, I think working for any sort of hobby store, whether it be Games Workshop or anywhere really, you're going to come across people in life who have certain um, mental issues, uh, certain issues that they are getting treatment for, or they are not getting treatment for if you are if you are unlucky. And so there are some conditions where you do overly share things, uh, almost out of a desperation to be liked or to get a laugh out of people. The reason why people do this is because they are so nervous about their own condition and being approached in a certain way or or not being understood that they try and make other people laugh with them or even at them just so they all leave them alone it also happens when you've got you have a mental illness and you're being bullied in school or something you will go out of your way to make somebody laugh at you rather than you know come at you aggressively or anything like that you know so it can mask much more serious issues which is unfortunate but hey you know I could tell the guy standing next to Tim was uncomfortable, uh, no shit, pardon the pun, so uncomfortable in fact, that when he deep-striked his Terminators, he deployed them on the far right-hand side of the board just to stay away from Tim. I've done this before. <laughs> I've done that before. And I know a lot of people will be like chopping up chicken or doing whatever they're doing with their daily lives right now, listening to this, and they'll be like, yeah, I've done that before. Everybody's done this before, where they've gone to a hobby store you're playing against somebody who stinks or who is really rubbing up the wrong way and you start deploying your models when they're deep striking or, or where they're going on the board away from the other player. I've done this so many times. You know, I, I guess as a staff member, you, you will do it more often than others, but like, I've done this so many times. We're going, oh yeah, I'm going to deep strike over here. Why? The, the objectives are over here. No reason, no reason. I, I just think this is the place where they would want to go because, you know, I can't smell Nurgle over here. Yeah. Tim would also do this thing where if nobody responded to him saying inappropriate things or talking about the game for a certain amount of time he would get angry and punch the table whilst breathing heavily yeah that is a, uh, that is a sign of what I was saying before there is a mental, mental issue here where he's covering it up by being over the top and trying to get a laugh out of people you know, trying to get a, a you know trying to be ingratiated pe to people by making them laugh when it doesn't work his defenses come up and he starts acting out you know his triggers are quite shall we say obvious anyway 
Not that you should know, because, you know, you, you, you don't know about these things. Anyway. Now, at this point, it has been roughly five to six years since I had fully finished counselling for my autistic outburst and anger management, and had sorted myself out. Good lad, good lad. So I thought it might be an idea for me to calmly talk to Tim about why what he's saying is kind of inappropriate. I had been in that position of not knowing how to react in social situations. Thankfully, not to the point I'm talking about shit stained sheets and things. So I thought, hey, maybe I can take what helped me and give him a bit of a hand. Yeah, good on you, lad. Good on you. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this probably doesn't work, but let, let's see. It gets to the lunch break and we head off to separate fast food places. Tim is just standing outside the shop, waiting for the 30 minute lunch break to end so we can go back inside. <laughs> oh my god. As much as I feel sorry for him being a, uh, you know, having some sort of issue, this guy is a creature. This guy is a real creature. Like, he's just hanging around outside, licking the window. No, not I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He's not licking the windows. Uh, <laughs> bit too far, North. Bit too far. Yeah. Apologies. Anyway. Um, it was only after the following events that I realised I should have I should have followed the guy that stood away from Tim and just kept my fucking distance. I proceed to say to Tim, "Hey man, do you want to come to lunch with me? I'm going to Burger King. Don't worry, I'll pay." Now that is an offer. As a gentleman and a scholar, you shouldn't refuse if you're in the hobby. Tim agrees and just says, "Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, I think I need to clean my pants anyway." He says whilst pulling the front of his trousers. Yeah, at this point, dude, I just do an about face and I walk in the opposite direction. Say, no, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to Burger King and I don't want you to come with me. Bye. Um, Tim walks ahead of me to Burger King. And I sigh while walking behind him. With it hitting me that I'm about to go to lunch with a guy with a piss stain running down the back of his trousers. Oh, no. Definitely not the best person I've ever had lunch with. But my long lost dad was the worst. Oh, what? But but my long lost dad was the worst. Oh yes, there's a fucked up story involving him and GW that happened very recently, but that'll be for another time. Okay. We both order and have XL double bacon cheeseburgers and large fries. Okay. As we sit down, Tim is scoffing fries down so fast I thought time around him had slowed down a little bit. I then say to Tim, Hey man, you know, some of the stuff you've been saying in the store has been kind of inappropriate. If you do have an accident, then hey, mistakes are made, but it's not really the sort of thing you should be saying in public. Just try and go and sort yourself out instead. As I'm talking, he's not paying any attention to what I'm saying. I continue saying, Also, the whole punching the table and getting angry, it used to be hard for me to control my angry outburst too. And on rare occasions, I do still have them. If people aren't paying attention to what you're saying, maybe consider it was just something you said that made them a little uncomfortable. Or maybe try not to take it to heart. It's a big game and everyone's trying to play. So they don't necessarily want to be paying attention to anyone whilst having a conversation. You know what I mean? He continues to ignore everything I've been saying, picks his nose and asks if he can take some of my fries whilst picking them up with the hand he he'd picked his nose with. Oh my god. I told him that's not fucking cool. You just picked your nose and grabbed my food without asking. I did ask, he replied. I responded I responded and said, Yeah, whilst grabbing my food. Doesn't exactly give me time to respond, does it? He doesn't look at me and just responds with, Okay. Oh my god. There is some sort of mental issue here. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. If, if you can diagnose this guy in the comments, feel free to give it a go. Um, I am diagnosing this guy with autism and shithousery. Because there are there are some people... There are, I've said this on the channel before. There are some people who rely on mental illness to get away with shit that they shouldn't be able to get away with. Do you know what I mean? That I, I've come across them a lot. There are some people who do try... Say, look, I've got autism... And that's why I'm kicking your models across the floor. No, it's not. You're doing it because you're a cunt. That's why you're doing it. That's why you're doing it, right? I don't care what sort of mental illness you've got. Leave my stuff alone and leave me alone. Unless you're having a complete mental breakdown, there's no excuse to get physical with me or my property. There's just no excuse, right? 
you're having a complete mental break, fair enough, then I'll try and defend myself. But apart from that, no, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. I, I've, I've known dozens and dozens of autistic people, both in life and professionally, as, as you know, a games workshop employee and an employee of other hobby stores, right? So, and not one of them has acted out in this way, right? They've acted in weird ways. They've acted a bit odd. They said a few things that aren't mildly appropriate, and so you, you say to them, look, man, that's not appropriate, right? But they don't act like twats. That's the point. Because they're not twats. They've just got autism. This is the one thing that's made me, com made me convinced that some people use what they've got, or what they think they have, as an excuse to be a prick to everybody around them and try and get away with it. Controversial, yes, but it's yeah, just something that I've come to believe in, in my time on this earth, to be honest with you, dealing with people. Anyway, after he's eaten my fries, Tim gets up and says he's going to the toilet and he'll see me at the store. I just put up my hands and say, okay, sure, and head back to the store. Well, good on you for trying, man. Well, at least he's, he's going to go clean himself off, right? Half an hour's gone by since the store reopened and Tim still isn't back. At this point, I don't really care. I think he must have gone home, but he still had models on the table. Then a couple of minutes later, Tim walks through the door and quite loudly says, Sorry I'm late, I had to have a little wank, whilst rubbing his privates. As he walks over to the table, he sees my HQ model and goes to pick it up. I know he's not going to ask, and I quickly pick it up before he touches it and tell him to keep his jizzy hands away from my models. In the end, as I'm leaving the store, after the tournament ends, he tells me he'll come back to mine to hang out. Not ask, tells. Yeah, that, 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 that's also an autistic thing to do. Um, that's happened to me before as well. So, there was one time at the store when... Okay, there was a guy, I'm just going to call him Simon, right? <clears throat> at my store. And I was always very nice to Simon. He had autism, you know, he, he, he had trouble understanding certain things. But I was always very nice to him. And as I was locking up the store that night at around half six, it was on a, you know, on a Wednesday night, whatever it was, I'm going home. I've got a late night the next day, so I want to go home and, and get myself, you know, sequestered. He's hanging around outside and starts following me home. He like, starts following me to the train station, you know what I mean? Which I stop and I say, you're right, Simon, you okay, mate? He goes, yeah, 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 so what are we going to do? I'm like, what do you mean, what are we going to do? I'm going home. He's like, yeah, yeah, but I mean, when we, when we get back, what are we going to do? I said, nothing, Simon. I'm going home. And you're not coming with me. He goes, whoa, oh, oh really? Uh, yes, really. He goes, oh, I just thought that. Oh, okay, fair enough. And he just walked off. He walked off. But he literally thought that simply because there's no, there nothing sexual about it, there's nothing weird about it, he literally thought, oh, I've made a friend. And in his mind, he put two and two together and came up with 20, right? Came up with 22, sorry. Right? He put two and two together, came up with 22. And said, right, we're now best friends and I'm coming home with you to play some Warhammer or something. Or paint some models, right? Uh, like, a guy like that will literally just start living with you. He'll just literally, if you don't stop him, he'll just come home and start living with you. Because it's just how his brain works, right? There's no harm in it. He, he just needs to be told. And as soon as he was told, he went, oh, okay. And walked off. Just walked straight across the road. Did, uh, didn't say anything about it. Next time he was there, he never tried to come home with me again. Never tried it again. Because he knew from then on in, that was it. You know, we're like, like, okay, that boundary's there. And I won't cross it, right? But that's just how certain people like that act. So that, I think there is autism here. Or some sort of um, mental issue. May not be autism, I don't know. Some sort of mental issue. Look at me diagnosing him. But you know, you know what I mean? Like, like, there's some sort of issue going on here. Um, maybe autism. Maybe, I don't know. But at the end of the day, it doesn't give him an excuse to just act like a prick, right? I, I just turn around and say, no, absolutely fucking not. Dude, I'm sorry, but you're disgusting and an inconsiderate prick. <laughs> okay. Well, you're a bit more forthright than I was, but hey, you didn't have a job to protect, I suppose. I was expecting him to get angry, but instead he just says, okay, and walks off. There you go. There you go. That's exactly how they go. Exactly how they go, man. Like, like I mean, it sucks, but it is what it is. <clears throat> I felt bad for being so brutally honest, but the guy needed to hear it. It's not normal to go around telling people this really personal stuff. I don't want to think about what, what would have done in my house or what he would have done there if I'd let him come back to mine. Anyway, all the best, North. Okay, cheers, man. Um, yeah, a really good investigation into how these things can go. Um, be very, very, very careful about how you approach certain people in the hobby. 
because not everybody has the same mental acuity as you. And some people will actively be treating the hobby as sort of like a, a crutch for their mental issues. Not their fault most of the time. But also, be very careful about who you're dealing with because you never know. You never, you never, ever, ever know. Don't keep everybody at, 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 at an arm's length. But just be ready with the poking stick if something ever, we, ever weird ever happens. Have you guys ever had something like this happen to you? If you have done, let me know in the comment section down below. I love you a long time. I'll be back uh, tomorrow with some White Scars lore. That should be really interesting. And then on Friday, we'll be back for some more Hobby Nightmares. See you then. Love you all. Have a good one. Bye.